Good morning, boys and girls. What a great day it is. It's our favorite day. What day is that? Wednesday. It's Wednesday. And why is it our favorite day? Because we get to hear all about God's Word. So, are you guys ready for our Wednesday morning chapel? I am. Everybody, stand up because it's time to do our pledges. So, are you ready? Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good job. Stay standing. And now, our Christian flag. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Good job. And now it's time for the uh, pledge to the Bible. Stand up. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Good job. Now, you may be seated. Boys and girls, I hope you've had a wonderful Easter. Sunday was Easter, the day that Jesus rose from the dead and showed us that he is the Son of God, that he died on the cross for our sins, and he rose on the third day, and he is coming back in the clouds just like he told us he would. So we're going to continue to look up because we know he rose from the dead, and he's coming back for us one day. So that's what we're looking for. Now it's time to do our music. Are you ready? Here we go. Stand up. Let's do our music. grandparents say or whoever is in the home with you I hope so because parents I want you guys to call us and let us know which one of your children deserves a sweet like Jesus award please let your teachers know parents so that we can award your student the sweet like Jesus Jesus award for obeying now guys we're going to do the pre-K through second grade. Let's see who has been obeying. And that would be Amari Harrison. Good job, Amari. We will be sending you your Sweet Like Jesus Award. And now for the fourth through the sixth grade, let's see who's been obeying. That would be... 
Chloe Thomas. Good job, Chloe. We will be sending you your Sweet Like Jesus Award. And now for the middle school. That would be Rayleigh Lynch. She has been nominated for the Sweet Like Jesus Award. Good job, Rayleigh. We will be sending you your Sweet Like Jesus Award. And finally, for the high school. Let's see which high school students have been obeying. That would be Zoe Gonzalez. Good job, Zoe. We will be sending your you your Sweet Like Jesus Award. So, good job, guys. I'm so proud of you guys for listening and obeying while you're at home, obeying your parents and doing your uh, classwork. Thank you guys for being obedient. And now, let's get into the Word of God. Now, do you remember last week we talked about a little boy who had a lunch? A little boy who was excited to come and hear about Jesus. And his mother wanted him to go, and she packed him a lunch. That was just for him. But you know what? He was so loved Jesus so much and loved being where Jesus was and with Jesus that he knew he needed to do something to help Jesus. And what did he do? He shared his lunch. Because when Jesus looked out and all these people were hungry and yet there was no food and nowhere to get any food, they didn't know what to do. But Jesus knew that there was one little boy who loved him. There was one little boy who wanted to share. And that's what he did. He stepped up and he said, Jesus, I don't have much, but take what I have. And Jesus took his lunch and shared it with everyone. And when he did, there was so much left over that there was 12 baskets full of food left over from a little boy's lunch. Isn't that amazing, the miracles that God can do? So Jesus was with the, the multitude, and they had been there a long time, and it was starting to get night. And he told his disciples, he said, Disciples, you go and you get the boat. You go and you get the boat, and you get in the boat and you go ahead to the other side. He said, I'm going to stay here, and I'm going to tell all of the people, you guys need to go home. It's late. Look at the time. It's time for you to go home. It's late. He wanted them to go home, but Jesus wanted to spend time with his father. He wanted to have time to go up into the mountain, and he wanted to have some alone time with his father. So he told all of the people, he said, I need for you guys to go home. I want all of you guys to go ahead, and I want you to go home because it's getting late, and I want you to go so I can go up in the mountains. Now, we are in Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. Matthew 14, verse 22. And straight away, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. People, I love you. You've been fed. Go home and get rest because I'm sending my disciples out on the boat and they're going to go to the other side. And I'll meet you over there is what Jesus said. You go, I'm gonna send them home. You go to the other side and I'll meet you. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Jesus wanted time to spend with his father, God. He wanted time to pray. He wanted time to talk. Do you take time to pray? 
Do you get all alone, away from mom and dad, away from brother and sister, away from family? Do you find time to pray? Do you, you may not have a mountain to go up to, but you might have a closet or a bathroom or somewhere quiet, a chair that's just for you that you can sit at and close your eyes and shut the door and tell everybody, I need to be alone. I need time to pray. And that's what Jesus did. He went up into the mountains and he prayed. And now the ship was in the now in the midst of the sea. And all of a sudden there were waves and the wind was blowing. Oh my goodness. Jesus is up alone on the mountain talking to God. And the disciples are in the ship. And all of a sudden they notice the the wind is blowing, and the waves are going, and they're, and they're driving, and they're doing everything they can to row. They're rowing, and they're rowing, and they're tired, and the more they row, the more the wind pushes them back, and it's, oh, the waves are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and all of a sudden, there comes these dark clouds. Dark clouds come up everywhere. Oh, my goodness. And then there's lightning that starts to come. And the waves are getting worse. There's lightning and there's thunder and the, it's dark. Oh, my goodness. And the, the boat is being tossed this way and that way. And they were, to, oh, and the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went into, oh, but the ship was now in the midst, and the, um, verse 25, and it was the fourth watch of the night, and Jesus went into them walking on the sea. Jesus is up in the mountains talking to his father, and he can see down there. He can see the waves coming. He can see the dark clouds. He can see the storm. He sees what's happening in our life. He sees when there's trouble. He sees when there's a storm. He sees when things are going crazy all around us and we think we're in trouble he sees and he could see in the midst of the storm and he could see what was happening on the ocean and he could see on the water what was happening and he started walking across to get to them and they're rowing and they're rowing and oh my goodness they're trying to keep the ship from going under and they're trying to get over to the shore and it's hard and it's dark and they look out and look and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a spirit. And they cried out of fear. Oh, it's dark. It's really dark. The lightning is coming, and it's the rain is pouring, and the waves are splashing. And all of a sudden, they see, Oh, my goodness, what's that? Look, John. Look, Peter. Look, what is that? Walking across the water. It must be a ghost. No, no, it's not a ghost. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Oh, goodness. But straight away, Jesus spoke unto them and he said, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. He could see they were scared. Oh, no. He could see that they, oh, my goodness, it's a ghost. What in the world? Oh, but he said, no, don't be afraid. I see you in the midst of the storm. I see that you're having trouble. I have come to help you. I was up on the mountain and I could see you. Boys and girls, no matter where we are, Jesus can see us. We are not alone. We are always under his eye. He can always see us and he did and he started walking toward the boat and they got nervous oh my goodness it's a ghost no it's me it's Jesus do not be afraid and look what happened be of good cheer I've come to help you and but P and Peter answered him and said Lord if it be thou bid me to come out on the water. Okay, Peter, come to me, come to me. And Peter started out of the boat. He lifted up his foot and he took one step on the water. Oh, and he took another because he had his eyes on Jesus. 
Jesus, help me come to you. And Peter started walking toward Jesus. He was walking on water because he had his eyes on Jesus. He could see Jesus. He was walking toward Jesus. And he was on the water. He can't walk on water. But he did because he kept his eyes on Jesus. He didn't look at the water. He looked at Jesus. Jesus, help me to come to you. And Peter started walking, and he started walking on water. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on water to go to Jesus. But, there's that word, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. Oh my goodness. He's walking toward Jesus. Jesus, I'm coming. I'm coming, Jesus. And then all of a sudden, he looks around. Oh, no, the wind. Oh, no, the rain. Oh, no, the lightning. He took his eyes off of Jesus. He started looking at the things that were around him. He started looking at the wind and the rain and the lightning. And he took his eyes off of Jesus. He, you can't take your eyes off of Jesus. You have to keep your eyes on Jesus. You don't look at the things that are around you. You don't look at what's happening in the world. You look at Jesus and see what's happening with you and Jesus. You walk to Jesus. You keep your eyes on Jesus. And then the things that are around you will not make you afraid. It's only when we look at the other things, when we take our eyes off of Jesus, do we become afraid. And Peter got out, and look what happened. And when he looked around, you know what? He began to sink. Here Jesus was, and all of a sudden, Peter began to sink. He was going down. Oh, my goodness, he was looking at everything else, but he wasn't looking at Jesus now. Now he was looking up at the sky. It's raining. He was looking at the lightning. Oh, no. He was looking over there at the wind. He was looking over there at the waves. Oh, no. Oh, no. And he started to sink. And he started to drown. And look what happened. And he cried, Lord, Jesus, save me. Oh, he could see he was afraid. And he had taken his eyes off of Jesus. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and gave it to him. And he said, oh, thou of little faith, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? And he took him by the hand, and he walked him into the ship. Why did you doubt? Why did you doubt me, Jesus said. You were looking at me. You were watching me. And we were fine. But then you started to look around, and you became afraid. And when you became afraid, you began to sink. Keep your eyes on me. And then Jesus got into the boat. And when he got into the boat, look. And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. The bad clouds went away. The bad, um, all the waves went away. The sea calmed because Jesus was now in the boat with them. He had been with them, but they couldn't see him. And then when he started walking across, they could see him. Peter wanted to have faith. He wanted to believe. And as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he was able to walk. It's only when he took his eyes off of Jesus that he became afraid and that he started to sink. Boys and girls, we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. Then they that were in the ship came and worshiped him saying of a truth thou art the son of god you are the son of god jesus who else could walk on water who else could stop the wind and the rain and the waves and make everything calm who else could control the world but god they learned a lesson that day that they had to keep their eyes
eyes on Jesus, that they had to keep looking at him no matter how bad things got around them, no matter what was happening outside the boat, they had to keep their eyes on Jesus and know that he was going to take care of them. Boys and girls, that's what's happening today. No matter what's happening in the world, you keep your eyes on Jesus. You make time to pray. You keep your Bible with you, even if you put it up under your pillow at night. You find time. Find a quiet place. Shh, shh. Find a quiet place to pray. Go find a chair to sit in. Go find a closet. Go find, go into the bathroom and shut the door. Shh, shh. I'm going to pray. Go into your bedroom. Shut the door. Find a seat and sit down and pray. Kneel if you like, but whatever you do, you read your Bible and you talk to God. He, keep your eyes on Jesus. He will keep the storms away. He will control everything around you. He will make a way. Everybody, bow your heads. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that you have taught us to keep our eyes on you. We thank you that you love us, and no matter where we are, you always come to us. Help us to keep our eyes on you, to love you, to give you our hearts and our lives, to trust you with everything, no matter what is going on. We love you. We trust you. And all the boys and girls want to say, I love you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen.